morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today or questions about the longevity products or formulations, skin health issues that you or a loved one may be dealing with, or if you just have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, our Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Healthy Start Pack, Ultimate Selenium, Ultimate Niacin, Ultimate Nightly Essence Probiotics, they're all up at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the website as well for a one-time $25 fee. You can start the longevity business. Enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business if you're an entrepreneur or if you like the entrepreneur lifestyle and you want to help people. You don't want to just sell widgets. You want to sell something that's going to make a difference in people's lives. If you like the business model of the entrepreneur, please check out our longevity, uh, the longevity business opportunity at brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can also call the Brightside Ben team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. And they can give you the full scoop on the longevity business and the longevity business opportunity. 866-735-2470 is their number. Or you can sign up right off the websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream and our Truth Blemish Repair Complex if you're dealing with acne blemishes or you don't want to be dealing with acne blemishes. The combination of our Blemish Repair Complex and Retinol 5% Gel makes a great acne protocol. Retinol 5% Gel, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel is also made with a whole bunch of vitamin C, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, oil, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products, all 100% active and functional ingredients. And that's why a jar of Truth Retinol 5% Gel will last you six months. Truth uh, Balm, a jar of Truth Balm will last you two or three months. Likewise, our Truth Serum and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. You can find out all about them at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side, friends. We've been talking about foods and excitotoxins and brain chemistry now for the last week or two. Last we spoke, we talked about the blood-brain barrier and its relationship to mental health. We said that the well-known phenomena of gluten intolerance, these days anyway, a well-known phenomena of gluten intolerance, which can destroy the health of the intestine, wreak havoc on the uh, microbiome, that is the universe of bacteria that lives in the, in the intestine. Gluten intolerance can break down that wall that separates the intestine from the blood. We call it the the uh, barrier, the intestinal barrier. You can think of it. Uh, you can think of the brain's version of the intestinal barrier as the blood-brain barrier. So the intestine blocks foods from entering into the bloodstream, at least in a random fashion. 
Foods are only supposed to get into the bloodstream through, through the intestinal tract once they're completely processed and vetted by the cells of the intestine. However, once, that, once those cells become damaged, foods can leak into the blood. The same phenomena occurs in the brain. The brain and the blood are separated in the same way that the blood in the intestine, or the blood and the foods in the intestine are separated. Once the, the barrier in the intestine gets damaged, it's very possible that you can have damage to the blood-brain barrier as well. The same way that you get damage in, uh, in the intestine and food particles and gut bacteria and their secretions get into the blood circulation when you have leaky gut syndrome. Same way, toxic material from the circulation can get into the brain from the blood under conditions of barrier damage. You could think of that as leaky brain syndrome, which is the brain's version of leaky gut syndrome. The blood is the sacred space. Nothing is ever supposed to get into the blood without it being in entirely vetted by the cells of the intestine. When we eat a food, the food gets crushed. Under healthy circumstances, when we eat a food, that food gets crushed up into tiny, tiny, tiny microscopic particles. And then those microscopic particles are very carefully, uh, and the, these microscopic particles very carefully enter into the bloodstream through the cells of the intestine. Once damage occurs, Random particles can get into the blood, and that's when we are off to the disease races. Once damage occurs to the intestine, bacteria from the gut can enter into the stream, into the bloodstream, or gases and, and secretions from those bacteria can enter into the bloodstream. Once these non-nutritional materials enter into the general circulation, an inflammatory defensive response in the blood can occur. This results in, in microscopic blob, uh, globs of material, which are combinations of food particles and immune cells. Com uh, blobs of immune cells and food particles are called CICs, circulating immune complexes. And these CICs can be thought of as just blobs of food, microscopic blobs of food, along with immune cells. And these CICs float around in the blood. They can result in uh, the accumulation of these, of these CICs can result in blood sluggishness. This can compromise nutrient delivery, oxygen delivery. It can lead to sluggish blood or clogged blood. It can lead to cardiovascular issues, kidney issues, high blood pressure, heart disease. Eventually, these CICs can wind up in various tissues of the body. So the body will just kind of dump, the blood will kind of dump these CICs into various tissues, specifically soft tissues, glands, the thyroid gland, the kidneys. And then you got a real problem. Now you've got these complexes, these food complexes, made up of food, little particles of food, undigested food that have leaked into the blood uh, in combination with, with uh, immune cells sitting in your thyroid or sitting in your pancreas, or sitting in your kidneys. Well, then the immune system looks at the thyroid, or it looks at the kidney, or it looks at the, the uh, pancreas, or it looks at the nerve cells, or whatever, uh, whatever tissue is being uh, damaged by these CICs, and it sees the CICs as the enemy, so it attacks the, the CICs, which are embedded in the gland, and that's where you have your autoimmune, autoimmune disease. That's how autoimmune disease begins. This is how autoimmune disease is caused. So you get food particles, CICs, they deposit in various glands. The body then attacks those glands because it sees these, these little CICs, these complexes in the foods, and we get an autoimmune disease. And then you go to your brilliant doctor and he gives you a steroid drug because that's all he can do because he doesn't understand this mechanism. But now you do. Now you're smarter than your doctor, which is why, by the way, when you stop eating, you feel better. Because all of a sudden, these toxins aren't entering into the bloodstream anymore. If you're fasting, you don't have any foods in your intestine, you're not going to have the, the uh, CICs and food particles entering into the bloodstream. Hope that's not too complicated because it's extremely important and it highlights and underscores how much power we have over our autoimmune diseases, over our health challenges in general, because almost all health challenges have this element behind them. This idea of stuff leaking into the blood and immune reactions into the blood. Certainly mental health challenges. And this is where excitotoxicity comes in. Because once you have a damaged barrier, whether it's an intestinal barrier or it's a blood-brain barrier, you're going to be more susceptible, at least from a mental health st uh, standpoint, from a brain health standpoint, to the, the negative harmful effects of excitotoxicity. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. 
Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com and pharmacistben.com. I'm sorry, at uh, brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. We've got search engines and archives on both websites. You can purchase longevity products from brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. And you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team from criticalhealthnews.com, brightsideben.com, and pharmacistben.com. Or you can call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Our number today, 844-236-6010. We've got lines open, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. So if you're dealing with autoimmune disease, if you're dealing with mental health challenges, if you're dealing with skin diseases, psoriasis, acne, rosacea, there's a very good possibility toxicity is entering into your blood through a broken down digestive system. Or if you're dealing with mental health challenges, there's a very good possibility that you're dealing with disruptions in what is called the blood brain barrier. Leaky brain syndrome and leaky gut syndrome. And by the way, if you've been on a round of antibiotics or if you've been on multiple rounds of antibiotics or if you're just on antibiotics long term, matters can be made much worse with this toxic one-two punch. First of all, antibiotics can exacerbate or even cause leaky gut by killing off good bacteria that protect the intestinal lining. Remember, your antibiotics don't know the difference between good bacteria and bad bacteria. They're just randomly killing things. So the good bacteria can be killed off by your, by your antibiotics. Uh, this can cause a breakdown in the intestinal lining, then bacteria from the gut and bacterial toxins and outgasses can enter into the general circulation. This can initiate an allergic or immune response. If the blood-brain barrier is compromised, which is very likely if there are long-standing gluten issues or long-standing excitotoxicity exposure, now you can get into real problems with your mental health. And even worse, once toxins get into the brain, bacterial gases or, or MSG or aspartame, the brain then becomes hypersensitive. The brain then becomes primed to react to toxicity. And then even small amounts of toxins can set off reactions, including depressive episodes, manic depressive episodes, psychotic breaks, schizophrenia, anxiety, social anxiety, PTSD. And of course, leaky gut doesn't just exacerbate or cause inflammatory and immune issues in the brain that can happen anywhere in the body. Systemic inflammation, immune reactions that occur in various glands, autoimmunity. All of this makes it much more likely, once you have inflammatory reactions in the blood, all of that makes it much more likely that you're gonna have brain permeability problems and mental health issues. Now, the take home message here is not that this is ter a terrible situation and that we got a big mess on our hands. That's not the take home message. That's not what I want you guys to remember from this. The take home message is that we're in control, that we have power, that we can take our health back, that this is not a doctor issue, that this is not a medical issue. Medical issues need to be uh, restricted to breaks when something falls on our head or broken bones. These are not medical issues. These are lifestyle issues. That means if you're dealing with an autoimmune disease, it's more than likely a lifestyle issue. If you're dealing with a mental health challenge, it's more than likely a lifestyle issue. If you're dealing with any kind of long-term inflammatory issues, it probably has to do with something that we're doing with our lifestyle choices, mostly around the foods that we're eating. The body, can, is well equipped to handle a certain amount of bacterial and blood toxicity. It's only when the immune system becomes overwhelmed that real problems arise. Also, because of the relationship of the liver to effective detoxification, once the liver becomes damaged, once liver health becomes compromised, remember, one out of three Americans is suffering from fatty liver disease. Oh, where does that come from? Foods, especially sugar. And once the liver becomes damaged, the likelihood of mental health issues as well as systemic health issues, including autoimmunity, becomes greatly increased. And again, it all comes back to what we're eating or how we're supplementing or not supplementing, especially around probiotics. 
Now, keep in mind, your liver is a food processing system, and it's a sugar processing system, and it's a detoxification system. Liver health involves how we process our food, especially fats and sugars, and how we detoxify substances that we're putting in our body that are not food, especially drugs. And that includes prescription drugs. I'm not just talking about illegal drugs. I'm talking prescription drugs. I know I've said it before. I'll say it again. This is the, the hidden, uh, a hidden uh, tox, a toxicity that's associated with, with prescriptions is linked to the liver. Nobody tells you that your liver is going to be compromised when you start taking your prescription drugs, especially if you're on multiple prescription drugs. There's no way that your liver is not going to be stressed and you're not going to be running higher risks of all kinds of diseases if you're on multiple prescription drugs, which of course are given to you for diseases. That underscores, that highlights the utter bankruptcy of the medical model. They give you drugs for whatever health challenge you have. It stresses out your liver, which increases the likelihood of more health challenges. It's absolute insanity. Are you guys beginning to see why eating behavior and fasting and stopping food for a short period of time can be so important for dealing with health challenges? This whole idea of gluten and gluten intolerance, which has gone, when I started talking about gluten intolerance 20 years ago, nobody knew what the heck I was talking about. Unfortunately, this idea of gluten and gluten intolerance has gone from unknown and mysterious to becoming a fashion and a fad and almost like a cliche or a joke. It's not a joke, it's serious business. Over the course of the last 20 years, gluten intolerance and, and problems associated with gluten in foods has gone from unknown to cliche. And it's unfortunate because you know what? Gluten is only one of thousands of plant compounds that can be problematic. It's not just gluten. I know I've said this before, but it's really important. I talk to people all the time. Oh, I'm gluten free, but I still got symptoms because it's not just gluten. Gluten's a poster child for these problems, but it's not just gluten. It's lectins, L-E-C-T-I-N-S, and gluten is just one of them. And this is why you can go gluten free and still have all kinds of health issues. That's why I find the concept of gluten free and all the hullabaloo about gluten to be a little bit counterproductive and simplistic. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to people who are eating gluten-free brownies and gluten-free oatmeal and gluten-free cereal and they can't figure out why they still have rheumatoid arthritis. So while gluten, I'm not, I'm not saying gluten is a good thing for a lot of folks, for most folks. It's a, it's a plant defense molecule and it's not supposed to be eaten by most people and it's certainly problematic. But for a lot of folks, going gluten-free is not enough to restore themselves back to health. You can have reactions to onions. You can have reactions to garlic. You can have reactions to broccoli. You can have reactions to artichokes or bananas or tomatoes or potatoes or corn or rice or oats. And they're all technically gluten-free, but you can still have a problem. And just because they're gluten-free doesn't mean you're not going to react. You can have lectin intolerance issues to beans, to dairy, to vegetation of all kinds, all grains, even corn and oats and quinoa and amaranth. They could all be potentially anyway problematic. Certainly peanuts and almonds and cashews can cause problems, soy products, potatoes. There's so many things that can cause problems. And the only way to know if you have a problem is to go by your symptoms, go by your symptomology. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll return right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here just a moment. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. If you'd like to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, please go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, if you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you here in just a moment. A couple interesting articles I want to talk about here momentarily. Could your breakfast cloud your judgment? Hmm, interesting. This is from uh, the Northwell Health, North Wheel, Northwell Health Neuroscience Institute in Manhasset, New York. 
A small experiment researcher said that people's decision making was influenced by the amount of carbs and protein contained in their breakfast. After a high, after a high carbohydrate breakfast, people tended to have lower levels of an amino acid called tyrosine. Now, tyrosine is one of my all time favorite amino acids. It's a, uh, I call it natural speed or natural caffeine. Tyrosine will give you a buzz. In fact, if you want to try it, uh, get yourself 100 mil. Don't do too much because you'll get a little jittery. If you do too much, you can even get headaches if you do too much. And remember, as we've talked about, we talked about yesterday and the day before, you don't really want to take too many single amino acids, especially if they affect your brain. There's some that are okay to take as a free form amino acids, per, uh, arginine and glutamine uh, may be okay, but tyrosine, you got to be a little careful with. Nonetheless, you can catch a little buzz if you do 100 milligrams of tyrosine. Tyrosine is readily available. It's a precursor to making dopamine, and it turns out and then when you eat a lot of sugar, eat a, especially if you have a high carb breakfast, you're going to have lower levels of this stuff, tyrosine. It is a very smart idea to eat as little food in the morning as possible. Now, if you're absolutely, absolutely ravenous, you've got to have something to eat. That's one thing. But go with protein. Go have a little piece of fish. Have a little piece of salmon. Have some eggs. It's really not a good idea to be doing too many carbohydrates, especially the refined carbohydrates that most of us ingest for breakfast first thing in the morning. And this is one of the reasons why you get tired first thing in the morning, or not tired first thing in the morning, but tired a couple hours after you eat your breakfast. A lot of folks need a nap at 10 o'clock, 10 or 11 o'clock. That's because of the orange juice and the toast and the potatoes and the Pop-Tarts and the Danishes. This idea of eating, breakfast, of eating high carbohydrate breakfast really doesn't serve us. If you have to eat, first of all, it's a good idea to skip breakfast. Breakfast is the most important meal to skip. Regardless of what you hear, of what you hear, you're actually ketogenic. If you don't eat, you know, say you stop eating around six o'clock or seven o'clock or eight o'clock at night, and you don't eat for ten or twelve hours, you're ketogenic. You're going to be generating a little bit of ketones, and if you can hold off till eleven or twelve o'clock, you're going to be generating even more ketones. Once you eat your breakfast, that doesn't happen, especially if it's a high carb breakfast. So stick to protein first thing in the morning. You can also do. Uh, you can also do, of course, uh, bone broth protein powder, or you can do whey protein powder if you can handle whey. It's plenty filling. You'll have plenty of energy. You won't have that, that crash that most people get at 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. That's a terrible time to crash, too, by the way. All right. From uh, St. George's University in London, cannabinoids, those are the active ingredients in the marijuana plant can, and the hemp plant, cannabinoids can be used in sequence with chemotherapy for a more effective treatment of cancer. New research has confirmed that cannabinoids are effective in killing leukemia cells, particularly when used in combination with chemotherapy. When I read this, what I think about is how important it is to use good nutrition with your chemotherapy or to use good nutrition with any medication. If you use nutrition with medication, and cannabinoids are not necessarily nutrition, but this just highlights the idea that you can support the action of your drugs and allow, that will allow you to use less medication. And this is always the goal. You always want to be using as little medication as possible. And anything you could do that will allow you to lower your dose is in your interest. Now, according to this article, chemotherapy will, uh, cannabinoids will allow you to, to lower your chemotherapy dose, but any nutritional supplements will allow you to lower your medication dose. And that should always be your goal. So don't let any doctor take you off your nutritional supplements when he puts you on a drug. This is, I don't want to say the stupidest medical strategy because there's a lot of stupid medical strategies, but it's near the top. This idea of taking you off your, your supplements because they'll interfere with your prescription drugs. And the answer to the question, will my nutrients interfere or block my, the action of my, of my poison, of my, nutritional, of my prescription poison, hardly ever, rarely more likely it's going to improve the action of your drugs and allow you to, to wean yourself off your meds. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Ben in Florida. Good morning. How you doing, Ben? Welcome to the Bright Side. Uh, good good uh, pharmacist. Uh, my uh, cousin, he's in his late 60s. He has an autoimmune disease now for five years. And he's got a weak heart. They put him on dialysis, and the dialysis wasn't working, so they put him on another type of dialysis, and... That was too hard on his body, and oh my gosh. his body was breaking down. This this so is terrible. Now, How old is he? They, they took they took him off of uh, off of dialysis, and they decided just to let him die. 
Is there anything that well, could maybe bring his kidneys back? Well, the kidneys will come back, but you gotta you gotta stop doing what you're doing, and it depends on how damaged the kidneys are. You know, that's going to determine whether he has enough time to to, to wait for his kidneys to come back. How old is the is your cousin? You said your cousin? I I, I think yes, around seventy. I think he's around seventy years old. So you know what? He's got seventy years of doing the wrong thing, probably more than likely. So we got we got to do what we can do. There are things that you could do. First and foremost, get him on a supplement program right away. Stat immediately. Stat is pharmacy talk for immediately beyond tangy tangerine right away healthy star pack right away now this will this will slow down the the, the deterioration now, i don't know how deteriorated he is so i can't tell you how much rever- uh, how how much of a reversal he's going to get right away but it'll slow it down that's right away that's the first thing you want to do okay make sense healthy star pack get him on it right away the next thing you want to do is you want to have him control his sugar and his, whatever he's putting into his system that's causing this toxicity sugar is probably the biggest problem especially if he's just doing the standard american American diet, you know, living the way most of us live. Uh, bread, pasta, potatoes, uh, certainly fruit juice and, and soda pop and desserts are verboten. Zero tolerance. He should have none of those things. He doesn't have uh, indulging in those kinds of foods is no longer an option for him if he's serious about turning this thing around. So keeping him off of anything that uh, spikes his blood sugar is very important. Minimizing his caloric intake is also going to be important. Calories are not his friend. Listen, calories are nobody's friend. You need a small amount of them, but calories represent work. And this is why nutritional density and nutritional supplementation is so important. I I don't want to say calories are not your friend. Calories represent energy, but for most of us, we get way too many. So keeping his caloric intake down while he gets his nutrition is very important. That's called the Cron diet or the Cran diet, calorie restriction, optimum nutrition. And this is a strategy for anybody dealing with a long-term health challenge. It comes down to what do you want? Do you want to expend your precious nutritional resources digesting your food? Or do you want to expend your precious nutritional resources healing and getting healthier and rebuilding tissue? And that's really the choice because digestion, the, the, the nutritional resources, Resources that are expended on the digestive process are coming away from the nutritional resources that we need to heal. So the less you eat, the longer you live. The less you eat, the faster your body will recover. Now that's caveat and warning. You got to make sure you have your nutrition. So when you're going calor- when you're uh, restricting your calories, you got to make sure you're on a supplement program and you're eating nutrient dense. Hang on, Ben. I got a couple more things to tell you, and then uh, we got to take a break. So don't go away. All right, Ben. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll take a quick commercial and come back with you and your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Ben in Florida. Good morning, Ben. So uh, your cousin has kidney problems. He's 70 years young. 70 years young. I say that specifically because 70 is not old. You can definitely have another 30 years of good living if you take care of yourself. And now he, your, your cousin is a, is a bit deteriorated. This is true. But he can start somewhere, and you got to start with, first of all, a nutritional supplement program, but secondly, with, uh, with ceasing the input of toxicity into the bloodstream, especially food toxicity, and that includes sugar. So you want to treat, he should be treating himself like a diabetic, using caloric restriction techniques in addition to the healthy start pack, and then relaxation strategies as well. Now, he probably knows that there are certain foods that make his symptom, symptoms worse, correct? Or do you know, do you know Ben? No, I don't know. I don't Ask him, ask him to look for foods that make his symptoms worse, that either make him more tired or cause any kind of pain or digestive health issues. If he has skin health issues, that's another good barometer, and those are foods that need to be eliminated. It, it will help him if he does a food diary where he writes everything down. Sometimes people don't want to go uh, do that, especially if he's medicated and if he's really feeling sick. But it would really help him a lot if he could write everything down and, and connect his symptomology to specific foods and then eliminate those foods. And in lieu of that, if he doesn't want to go all out and do that, then just uh, practicing caloric restriction and getting as much of his nutrients in liquid fashion and in supplemental fashion and using nutrient-dense foods. And when I say liquid fashion, I'm talking about things like aloe 
of Vera Gel or bone soup or a smoothies. Uh, it would help to put things like yogurt, it, any kind of uh, maybe kefir if he can handle dairy in his uh, in his smoothies so that he gets gets the good bacteria to support intestinal health. Most important thing I could tell you is the intestine is where he wants to start. Using nutritional supplementation and focusing on digestion, the intestine, and the foods he's eating or staying away from foods. Those are, that's the most important strategies for him. All right, Ben. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, pharmacist Ben. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You guys, everything is reversible. Now, whether you have enough time, if you're 70 or 80 or 90, or if you're, if you're uh, been mucking up the works for decades, you may not have enough time to completely reverse things, but you can begin the reversal process immediately. Everybody can, but it's not a drug issue. Drugs will not reverse chronic disease, but there are lifestyle strategies that will, and you can begin them immediately, and you can begin the reversal process as soon as you make the decision to change the way you're eating, change the way you're living your life. It is in our control to do that. That's the bottom line here, folks. That's the bright side. It is in our control to reverse chronic degenerative diseases, no matter what they are. All right, Stephen in Pennsylvania, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side, buddy. How you doing? God bless you out there, Ben. I have a question uh, question for you, two questions. One uh, uh, comment about the uh, kidney problem. Yes, sir. Uh, my uh, uh, dad, who had uh, passed away, uh, was I helped, I uh, got in touch with the uh, uh, a compounding pharmacist uh, who is the only pharmacist that would uh, actually uh, prescribe uh, 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 things for uh, in putting in a feeding tube to help somebody who was in a hospital? And uh, and I told them that they said my uh, father's uh, kidneys were uh, starting to shut down. He said, "Oh, don't worry about that. Just give them this. Uh, it was a yucca, a form of yucca extract." Okay. And that's a. Uh, a saponis, uh, uh, how do you say that? Saponis uh, uh, herb that makes soap suds. Saponiferic. Uh, for me. It, it, it was a saponin. Yeah. Saponins, saponins make the soap. Yeah, so, and, and all the, uh, all the, almost all the ginseng, the adaptogens are saponiferous uh, herbs. They clean. They, they, uh, they, have they the soap. They act like soap. They detergent out the kidney. They clean the kidney. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Yeah, Interesting. Said, uh, don't worry about that. The kidney will start to uh, work again. How did he do? Extract. Did it work? Uh, no. He, they, they, uh, I don't even want to tell you what, to, what they did to him. Uh, I don't know about you know I, I have I, I like herbal medicine but nutrition is is it's really primary medicine is medicine and it implies that you need somehow to be fixed I believe that we're not sick we're starving now is there need for medicine at times yes absolutely I'm not Pollyannish about this I've been studying medicine for thirty plus years yes there's times you need drugs but drugs are not going to heal anybody. Drugs only shut down and suppress. That's the only well, way they work. I'm talking about a drug. I'm talking about it's still uh, a drug. The, the extract. Uh, it's still a drug. It's still a drug. Herbs are drugs. Most. It's not. A, we want to get, understand this. For herbalists out there, your herbs are drugs, and they're medicines. That's how they need to be regarded. They they still need to be detoxified by the liver. That's how I identify. That's how I define a drug. Something that the body needs to detoxify itself from. It doesn't need to detoxify itself from vitamins. It doesn't need to detoxify itself from proteins and fats and carbohydrates. It does need to detoxify itself from herbs or drug, or, uh, or prescription drugs, and that's how I define poison. I'm yeah, sorry, go there, ahead, Stephen. There was another thing that uh, he uh, suggested. It's the, uh, I think they call it PSP. It's the uh, polysaccharide peptides uh, from a rice brand uh, uh, extract. Uh, they have all the, uh, I guess they're maybe mu mucopolysaccharides. Okay. Uh, uh, they're uh, essential sugars. There's eight essential sugars. And uh, uh, they're very important, too. They are very important, especially for folks who are dealing with autoimmune disease. In fact, tomorrow we're going to talk about FODMAPs. Have you heard about those? They're, uh, they're, the, they're the nasty sugars. Sugars oh, are really... Okay. Yeah, we'll have a conversation about that. Hey, Stephen, i, I got a bunch of questions. One yeah, go before ahead. you go. Uh, go ahead. I, uh, on a Memorial Day, I visited the uh, it was a Vietnam uh, Veterans Memorial Wall. Uh, I was out here in Pennsylvania. And uh, I met a uh, veteran, and the poor guy had a really big nose. It looked like a giant strawberry. You know what uh, strawberries looked like? That, uh, that, that was it red? Like a, and, and I said, well, you know, I went to talk to him. You know, I said, I know a lot about health. And uh, just to see what's, what, what his doctors said, they don't know. His doctors don't know anything. 
All the doctors and all the uh, VA hospitals, they don't have the slightest idea why it's this awful. guy's nose was so big and bulbous, like a, like a giant strawberry. So what happened? What do you do? And uh, No, I just took his phone number, and uh, I was wondering I want to give you a call. Have him, was, give, have him give me a call. Rosacea, it sounds, like a, it sounds like rosacea. It's a circulatory problem. When you see redness anywhere in the body, you're dealing with a blood issue. Too. It was not just red. It was, it was big. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like a that sounds like rosacea to me. It could have to do. Was he drinking a lot of alcohol? Sometimes people well, when they drink water. Drinking beer. Yeah, sometimes alcoholics will have that problem as well. Uh, Steve, I want to I want to get one more call in here. Thanks, buddy. Thank Appreciate your call. Right. Take care. Yep. All right. Yeah, redness on the skin needs to be regarded as a circulatory issue, uh, and rashes and itching on the skin always should be backtracked to the digestive system. Rosacea, in particular, is a digestive problem, not a skin problem. If you don't know what rosacea is, it's a, a red condition that occurs in the cheeks, sometimes on the nose. It's sometimes associated with breakouts or acne. It is a food and blood issue digestive issue that is sometimes it's initial sometimes it starts off in the stomach sometimes it starts off in the intestine but it is a food issue then a blood issue not a skin problem all right eight four four two three six sixty ten carl the truth raider what's morning, going on man. buddy what's going this on is man? my update with the with the status of the swero beef well i feel a little bit lighter yeah did you lose weight uh, i i i think so i i i, I haven't I don't pay attention too much to weight because a lot of it is water weight. So how long? There's, there's how long were you weight. on? How long were you on the Swear of What was your program? Well, I, I have a couple of bottles left, but I got twelve bottles. Yeah, you did twelve. twelve. Drank twelve <laughs> bottles. You drank ten. How much did you do? Ten bottles. Yeah, I'm up to about ten bottles. I have two bottles left. Yeah. I feel lighter. Okay. I'm not as in much. I'm not as in much rheumatoid pain. I guess you would have to consider it rheumatoid pain. Very I'm nice. Having pains in joints. I have an injury where I I pulled them, pulled either a ligament or, or a tendon or irritated or tore a muscle in my left shoulder, and that's been aching like crazy. Like I have a broken arm on and off for weeks. And you noticed um, improvement from the swear of but from that, I don't feel as much pain, although I'm under tremendous stress right now. Okay, well, hang on, hang on, Car Carl, hang on. First of all, it's not yeah. just the swear -V. Let me tell the listeners about swear -V real quick. swear -V is a fermented whey drink formulated by Jordan Rubin, <clears throat> part of the Beyond Organic line. You can get it off brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. swear -V is a great drink to use if you're trying to restrict your calories or you're trying to fast. You can do a swear -V cleanse, which is basically a swear -V fast. It gives you energy in the middle of the day. It's a way to lower your calories because you get energy without having to eat food. It's, it's basically liquid nutrition and it's awesome, awesome for digestive health. Remember, there's a major link between the digestive system and the immune system and uh, digestive health and immune problems. So once you get on the Swero V, you'll notice that if you have inflammatory issues, immune issues, autoimmune issues, whatever they are, you'll notice that your symptoms are improving. However, there's other things you got to do. Carl, the Truth Raider, and our listeners. Carl, I got to go, buddy. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Thanks for the update, too. Uh, there's other things you got to do. The Swero V is not all you need, but it's a great way to introduce a nutritional supplement program it's a great way to begin a fast and a food diary program. And it's also just great to have in the middle, have a little swear V in the middle of the day. Even if you're perfectly healthy, a little swear V in the middle of the day is great for energy. Swear V, S U E R O V I E. You can find it at brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.